Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So like maybe you, maybe someone you know, maybe no one you've heard of, uh, I have been reading a book lately called Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And it's incredible, super entertaining and very deep and profound and fabulous. And in the book, Glennon freely shares that she's sober and works a program of recovery. And um, so there's a lot of synergy behind um, the concepts that she talks about and how I think of things and how we talk about things here in Brightline Eating. And I wanted to um, highlight one of those things in particular in this vlog. Now, the, the book as a whole is around the idea that our conditioning from all kinds of places, society and our parents and uh, school and just the norms, um, uh, yeah, and conditioning that we're raised with creates essentially a cage for us. And we ultimately voluntarily sometimes stay in that cage. And it's about the process, her process of breaking free. And in the process of breaking free, she talks about four keys, four keys to that process. And one of them is to be still and know, just accessing that deep knowing. She even outlines a set of steps for doing it. And it literally goes like this. She says something like, you're tootling along through your day and some sort of feeling of uncertainty or something comes up and you stop and you sink deep inside yourself. You just sink and you feel around in there for the knowing, the little nudge of what to do next. Just that one next right thing, the little nudge. And then you do it and you don't explain. You just do it. And you work at shortening the time between feeling the nudge and executing it. And you work at returning to that knowing more reliably over and over and over again forever. And she talks about, you know, the circumstance in her life that led her to first uh, discovering her own knowing. She talks about how she was Googling, um, what do I do if my husband is a cheater, but he's also a really great dad. And she uh, talks about like the irony of watching herself metacognitively, metacognitively doing this, sort of thinking, what am I doing? I'm like polling the internet, you know, some random collection of bots and trolls and, you know, advice columnists for what, whether I should leave my marriage, you know. Um, and then she talks about polling her friends, you know, and uh, realizing nobody else can know what I should do. My only true knowing is deep inside myself. And she talks about starting a meditation practice by sitting in the closet and locking herself in there in the dark and sitting for 10 minutes at a time. And she talks about finally being able to sink inside of herself and feel a knowing. And if you know the story of the genesis of Bright Line Eating, I was sitting in a morning meditation early in the morning and I got a knowing. And it said, write a book called Bright Line Eating. And before that moment, I'd never heard the words Bright Line Eating before. That was it. That was the birth of Bright Line Eating. It came in a knowing, a deep knowing. And before the day was up, I had gone to Barnes & Noble to write, to buy a book called How to Write a Book Proposal. And here's the thing. For those of us who have food issues, weight issues, the kinds of struggles that would result in someone watching this vlog. Food is in many ways for us, the canary in the coal mine. It's the sign, it's the um, clue that we're off 
track from heeding our knowing. Because that deep knowing doesn't ever say, why don't you eat a dozen Twinkies? <laughs> That's not what the nudge says, right? The deep knowing isn't a nudge to eat. There might be a nudge to eat inside somewhere, but it's not coming from there, right? And I don't know where the deep knowing comes from. I call it my God voice. And part of me feels like that's kind of presumptuous to say that, you know, God is speaking to me all the time through my gut. But you can call it your intuition, your gut. Um, you can call it your authentic self or your highest self. You can call it, you know, George for all I care. It doesn't matter, right? But I mean, if it's coming from ourselves, isn't that beautiful too? Like, okay, right? So great. Access to our deepest selves. I know that on... Um, coins that celebrate lengths of sobriety, there's one phrase on the front and it's, to thine own self be true. To thine own self be true. In the book Untamed, Glennon Doyle says, we have one wild, beautiful life. It's ours. It's no one else's. What are we going to do with it? Our one wild and beautiful life. And I think ultimately it's possible to reach a place of being grateful for the food and the weight and the struggle because it creates a symptom so intolerable that it drives us toward discovering the knowing, needing to figure out how to put down that food and how to cope with life without the food which ultimately leads us inside of ourselves and learning how to sink and find the deep knowing. That is the true purpose of Bright Line Eating, is to unleash all of the human potential, all of the authentic, wild, beautiful lives that are currently trapped in an endless cycle of overeating, numbing, dieting, stuffing, and placating, and distracting from the deep longing that exists down there, that deep, deep knowing of what the next right thing really is and what our lives really are meant to look like. So... I invite you to also take 10 minutes in a closet or not. You can pick your spot. I personally do it in my office for 30 minutes every morning, my meditation. And yeah, just practice sinking and finding the knowing. And then the key is following it. It's the hardest part. I love you. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.